Robertson, you guys remember that Cretan? <laughs> well, in 2013, this is so 10 years ago, a viewer wrote in and asked him a question about someone in that viewer's workplace, uh, a coworker of that viewer, who decided that they were going to transition into uh, being female. And Pat Robertson answers this question, again, 10 years ago, 2013, in a way that would be completely unrecognizable to the conservative posture towards trans erasure right now. Just, it's just, this is stunning, truly. In the Bible, go ahead. This is David who says, I work with two people who have decided that they are females. I know what the Bible says about homosexuality, but is it wrong to refer to them as females since they've had their gender status changed in the eyes of the law? Uh, Why would you have to refer to them as females? I, I don't name? understand all that, but uh, I think there are uh, men who are in a woman's body. Mm -hmm. It's very rare, but it's true, or women that are in men's bodies, and uh, they, they, they want a, a sex change, and that is a very permanent thing, believe me, when you have certain body parts uh, amputated uh, and you have shot up with various kinds of hormones. Uh, no, it's a, it's a here. radical perspective. He, he said he said believe me in a way that you would say that when you have experienced that yourself well, i yeah. think what we, is he talking about i think we can <laughs> i think if we can believe anybody about the bible and its interpretation it's pat robertson since he's been around since it was written yeah but, you know I so I, I believe him on this one look right. how old he looks 10 years ago oh it's still, I, was still thinking, I was thinking that yeah <laughs> I mean, him and Henry Kissinger and Dick Cheney, it's like, guys, God, what kind of blood are they drinking? But, um, let's continue, right? Yeah. Well, the blood of Jesus Christ, of course. Oh, naturally, yes. <laughs> thing, believe me, when you have certain body parts uh, amputated uh, and you have shot up with various kinds of hormones, uh, it's, a, it's a radical procedure. Uh, I, I don't think there's any sin associated with that. I, I don't condemn somebody for doing that. But somebody who just says, well, I'm really a woman, I, I question the validity of that statement. But they say they're, they're counted as female. You, you don't count somebody as female unless they really are, or male unless they really are. In this instance, so this is the person who works with two people, so he doesn't really know their intentions no. or know their personal no. medical scenario it's not for you to decide or to judge all right okay this is april who says I hey, okay so of course not a perfect answer naturally there's still a lot of hate and weird theocratic undertones that are going to be <laughs> widespread in any 700 club uh, sh uh uh episode but like the the hatred, the fear, the demonization, it just shows how astroturf this entire movement is. Can you pull up that Media Matters graph that I sent, Bradley? Because, right, I, yeah. I, I just want to like add, ahead. like, you know, it's, you could probably also find some very anti-trends clips from Pat Robertson going back uh, sure. that same amount of time, too. But the point here is that... You know, it, it was dependent on uh, what the particular story was or how he was feeling that day. There was no uh, pre-written, you must, if you're a conservative, you're, for, you're a right winger, you must have this hardcore, hardline stance on trans people like there is today. Like, like I just said, it, Pat Robertson would have given you a different answer based on uh, how he felt that day 10 years ago uh, for whatever the specific story was. Today, uh, he would have a very very particular answer regardless yeah. of what day it was and regardless of what the specific story was because the conservative movement has decided you must feel this specific way you must be anti-trans if you're a conservative yeah i mean it's the definition of a moral panic and mm -hmm. now that we have like these moral entrepreneurs on the internet who are like clout sharking based on this entirely, you know, astroturfed, but still deeply rooted in our culture's misogyny, our culture's and our culture's, uh, you know, 
sexism, broadly speaking, this new thing that they can latch onto, you know, it's clear that that's just become a, just a new metric by which to judge how far right or how hateful you can be. And it's, it's transparent, but doesn't make it any less dangerous, which I think is like the, you know, the disgusting part. And the last part there where he says that it's not for me to judge or anyone to, to judge a viewer. I mean, like, honestly, that's where I think the country largely is or would be if there wasn't this astroturfed campaign uh, on behalf of, uh, like, honestly, right wing uh electoral politics right getting people activated on the local level your children are are under existential threat so go to your school board meeting go and vote and if politics are local which is how the right really likes to uh strategize then that person who's going to the school board meeting is much more likely to go to the polls and vote for a republican down ballot organize fundraise all that kind of stuff and then also the other part of it is and let's pull this up here anti-trans hatred is incredibly lucrative for yeah. right-wing media members like this is from a one-year rough period 11-month period and i know it's a little old for media matters but i still thought that this was instructive the facebook interactions on trans related posts by page ideology and you just see I mean, 60 mil, 60.1 million on right leaning pages, 16.1 million on left leaning, 18.6 million on what uh, Media Matters designates as, as non aligned yeah. pages. And it's just like it's hatred and the obsession that it engenders from people who have some repressed stuff and also just like um, are uh, far right and, and, and have that in them. It's it, it's lucrative for guys like Matt Walsh. The Daily Wire, all that, all those kinds of figures. That's exactly true, right? And it also feels more so than in 2010 when the right wing was using uh, 2010. You know, back during the Bush years when they were using like gay marriage and other sorts of like LGBT or LG, you know, not T but LGB issues to like divide the country. That felt much more like, you know. Uh, politician driven, like think tank driven. This one feels a lot more just like internet media mm -hmm. and also entrenched Fox News media trying to come up with a new, again, fear mongering campaign, new way to make money off of keeping people scared. And a lot of local, you know, Republican politicians have just adopted it as their, you know, as their mantra too to get some of that money, to get some of that clout, to, you know, to hop on what it seems to be a very lucrative uh, financial opportunity as demonstrated by a lot of these like online influencers. I, it's, you know, it's, it's, crazy how much of this is, seems to be being driven by like people online more so than like the everyday average you know republican you know national politician now local politicians are a whole different story right. they're like all you know uh, but like at least you know they seem to be taking their cues from a lot of the more entrenched right-wing figures in our media it, it, it's it's a hundred percent true and it is I, I think to add to your point brandon Republicans tried to run on this in the midterms and they just did not do well electorally. Uh, it, it did not hold like the thesis that I spoke about, about po all politics being local. It wasn't enough for them to make the gains that they thought they were going to make, given Biden's unpopularity. Um, the problem is just like the Republican Party is more unpopular. And the what really is driving this, I think, is engagement. And the Daily Wire is a huge part of it. Um, they have people now like just commentators on their platform matt walsh most notably michael knowles is trying to break into it but even the hiring of jordan peterson on this beat on this beat and it's not a coincidence that they hired peterson as matt walsh's um documentary what is a woman came out they're seeing those numbers they're seeing those numbers it's a driver for engagement this kind of hatred and then it becomes a Frankenstein monster. So, yeah, it makes money. It definitely, it, it you know, right. It definitely gets people to donate to your campaign, whether or not it helps your campaign win, I think is a different story. But, you know, a lot of people are just thinking about this politics thing as a way to launch their next like podcast. Now, it seems even Obama. Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. God, does he have a podcast now? I know Michelle Obama does. He had like a limited series one with Bruce Springsteen.
thing which sounds like oh my god just like rip my teeth out instead it's not just i would rather get tortured like uh james bond at the end of casino royale than, <laughs> than listen to like two 50 year old like dad boomers just being like remember how it was in the 80s <laughs> if you actually if you actually are bruce looking is, for- bruce is like 70 actually like they're all of those guys yeah, like- but if you're actually looking for insight i just what goes through the mindset of somebody looking to a form like a, a, a former president speaking on a podcast it's just there's no honesty that's going to come out in that ever ever so what is it's just background noise exactly. i mean people listen to the cia podcast so who <laughs> i mean obama keeps winning awards too for whatever various different entertainment uh things he comes out with so i mean uh, it seems like all you really got to do is uh, win the presidency and then uh, <laughs> your entertainment I, I would... career whoosh straight <laughs> message to all the Ben Shapiro's and Matt Walsh's out there, the Michael Knowles. Yeah. If you want that career in entertainment, you don't become a right-wing politician. You become a uh, basic neoliberal, win the presidency, and then boom, bada, bing. There you go. You'll be uh, uh, winning Academy Awards and... and uh, Oh, that Mar- 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 Marjorie Taylor Greene has her show, right? She has like um, MTG online or whatever it's called. I, I don't Ted know. Ted Cruz like- has his own podcast now, too. Um, so there's uh, Josh Hawley with his wife, where they are very, very uh, uh, lacking in sexual chemistry. That, all that good stuff. I just can't imagine. It's like this kind of stuff just funds itself. It doesn't matter how many people are not listening to it. It's just depressing when we're in this space and just we don't get paid anything. So there's a lot of money sloshing around the like right wing radio space. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Dennis Prager makes money. Yeah, I know. I I I know. It's it's painful.